What's up, sons? It's Blind Yard with Son of a Tech once again, and today I'm going to show you guys how to install a version of SteamOS onto regular PC hardware, and we can get into details of how to configure this, etc., in later videos. Let's go ahead and hop right in. So, first things first, you are going to need a flashing utility. Today, we're going to be covering Bolina Etcher or utilizing this one in particular just because it is the easiest one to use. We're also going to be utilizing Windows 11 for the flashing process. So I'm going to click the download button. It's going to take us down here. We're going to find the one for Windows and download that installer, save it to our downloads. And once it's complete, we'll go up here and as soon as it's done there, we'll click it and install it might take us just a little bit and as you can see it is ready to go so the next thing that we're going to need to do is get the operating system we wish to install today we're going to be utilizing bazite.gg now the reason we're utilizing this is because SteamOS is now available for you to install onto other handheld systems but not necessarily uh, on regular traditional PC hardware. And so this is really the best distribution I have found personally, the most up to date. And it is running on Fedora, not Arch, like SteamOS. So it is utilizing a different Linux distribution. There are a few other options as well, but this is what I found to be the most supported for the most amount of hardware etc. So once you're here, you're going to click the download Bazite button and it will take you down to the download options. You're going to select your hardware. Today we're going to be doing it on a desktop PC. We are going to be utilizing an AMD GPU and I like the KDE desktop environment. It is like, of course, SteamOS. There is GNOME. That's going to be closer to maybe like Mac OS if you're familiar with that one. So it's really up to you, but KDE is my preferred. And if you're coming from Windows, it'll be a lot more similar uh, to what you're utilizing on Windows. So keep that in mind. Then you have the option for Steam Gaming Mode. This will basically have the operating system boot up in the Steam uh, gaming mode version like it does on Steam OS and you will have to actually hit the power button to go into your desktop environment. You can if you're going to be utilizing this as a desktop environment just saying no on the Steam game mode and you can basically go into Steam game mode if you want to still but it will boot up into a desktop environment. The other important thing to note on this one is two things. One, right now NVIDIA GPUs are in beta with Bazite to function in Steam game mode but there are quite a lot of issues with it in particular. The gaming experience with NVIDIA isn't that terrible. It's pretty good, almost on par, of course, with the Windows side of things and the AMD side of things. So that's not really a downside. It's just the loss of the gaming mode. So if you are thinking about doing this to run a console-like experience, I highly recommend utilizing an AMD GPU. Now, another note here is it does say some devices with two AMD GPUs. So if you have a Ryzen uh, desktop CPU with an iGPU I on it, maybe cause game scope to be unable to detect your display. Now, I have this running on a system with a Ryzen 7 9700 and a 7800 XT. I have not had any issues with this in particular, but it's something to note. Uh, I think even then you can just disable that iGPU in your BIOS and it will get rid of any issues that you may have with game scope. You definitely want game scope functioning though. At this point, you can click the download button and click the save button and it will go through the process of downloading that and then we'll get to flashing it onto a USB drive. Now, of course, you will need a USB drive to make this function. Uh, this one in particular is just a standard USB 3.0 drive. If you do have the capabilities of, you know, basically having a USB-C drive or, you know, 10 gigabit, gigabyte per second or higher uh, transfer speed or gigabit per second transfer speed, excuse me, that would be a better option as far as installing as quickly as possible. 
you'll need obviously an NVMe drive uh, that is going to also speed up your install process too. That download took a little bit longer than expected, but once it's downloaded, we're going to open Etcher once again, click the flash from file button, go to our downloads folder and select the image for Bazite deck stable and click open. Then we're going to plug in our USB drive that we wish to flash, click the select target button and it should pop up here. We'll select the disk that we want to flash and then click the flash button. Click yes if you get a user access control warning and then let the process complete. All right, when it finishes, it might ask you to format. Make sure you click cancel on that because you definitely don't want to. And then we are going to take the drive and plug it into our system. All right, I already have the system running here, but we're going to reboot it and then install the OS. It's just going on to a little 500 gigabyte hard drive here. And as you can see, there's a 14700K in this particular system and 16 gigabytes of memory should be sufficient. And then we have a 7600 XT uh, Radeon GPU on it. Does look like we need to enable XMP though here. So we're going to do that as well while we are here. Now I don't have an operating system on this particular system. If I did and I was going to wipe that drive, I'd need to go into the boot menu, but as it is now, it should just boot straight to that USB drive for the install. All right, on this page, we're just going to go to, let's see if this will start working. Hopefully the batteries aren't dead here. There we go. And we are going to click the install button. And we don't have any drives or anything, so it will look a little funky, but we're gonna do English. And then this is the installation summary. There's a few things that you'll want to do on here in general. Um, the first thing is the installation destination. You'll click in and just select the hard drive that you want to install it to. And then you'll click the done button and it should say selected. Hold on. Let's double check automatic selected and then done. There it goes. Installation destination is selected. It will do the automatic partitioning. Then we're going to click the user creation and create a user here real, real quick. You don't have to do this right now, but I find it makes it easier. And then click the done button. And then the network, if you're on Wi-Fi, you will need to select the network ahead of time so it can update itself. I'm going to get a network selected here. Make sure it finds it and then I'm going to click done. And then I will go down to the bottom right and select begin installation. All right. Once it's completed down at the bottom right, you can see the button for reboot system. So we're going to reboot. Once it's rebooted, you will be on the welcome screen. The welcome screen is the same startup that you have with the Steam Deck. So you can just go through this process, select the English. You can then set select your time zone. If you already connected to your Wi-Fi, it'll be connected. If you're hardwired, obviously it will be connected. I haven't had any modern issues with any Wi-Fi drivers. All devices seem to work perfectly fine. We're going to say connect and then it will go through an update process. Boom. And then once it's done the update, you can log into your Steam account. Yes, a Steam account will be necessary. If you have the Steam app, you can log in with the QR code. This is the easiest way to get logged in. So take that into consideration. I find it super simple to get in that way. And then it will load all of your user data. It will go through this process. 
And then the next step that you may want to take into consideration is setting up a controller. So you can click the Steam button menu, go to Bluetooth and turn it on. At this point, you can start syncing, of course, a controller with the Xbox. We'll just hit that and then this top button and then it will start blinking just like you would with an Xbox or a Windows PC should pop up for you to click right there and then it will pair up and now we can use the Xbox controller. If you want to go into the options menu, you can press the Xbox button and the A button and this will give you all your settings. I like to turn on my performance overlay to two just to make sure everything's functioning right. But before we get into the rest of the system, we're going to go to the menu, power and switch to the desktop. If you installed in desktop mode, this is the mode you will be booted into. And you want to do this right off the bat because it's going to give you this welcome screen and there are some additional options you can install like Decky Loader, Decky Frame Gen, which will swap DLSS for FSR3 upscaling in Frame Gen. So if you're on a essentially AMD GPU, then you got the Emu Deck, Sunshine, Resilio Sync, Media Apps. You can install all of those if you like. You don't have to. It's really up to you which ones you need and then you can click the install button and it'll go through the process of installing. Uh, there is a wallet system. I'm not going to utilize it. Let's see if I can just bypass it. There we go. You will have to type in your password to finish setup. The one we did at the beginning of the video. And then we are going to click next. And there is additional stuff here if you want to install. Uh, if you're using a Razer keyboard and mouse, Open Razer is the option for that. If you are using the Wooting keyboards, Wootility is down here. So just keep that in mind. And if you want to do Open RGB for lighting, you can do that as well. It's really kind of piecemeal. It's pretty nice though if you're looking for all these different things. It's all here. If you're bored, you can click show console and see what's here. It says we need to restart terminal, but it may have you do some additional things for any additional apps that you install. Just go through the process and then you can click done and you are ready to go. Now I wanted to show you guys here, you will need to do some updates. It's as simple as clicking the start button, going into the search and looking for system update and then confirming, oops, we just need to do a yes. Okay, well, there we go. Type Y for yes, and it will pull all the latest information from the repository, and then you will need to finish the update. Once the update is complete, you'll press R for reboot and type in your password. So there you go. That is how you can install Bazite or Steam OS on any PC hardware. There's a lot of different things that are awesome that you can do as well, including emulation, etc. As far as games, I will go over this really quickly. If you are worried about if the game works or not, you can head on over to protondb.com and it will have an extensive list of games that are compatible and if you're having trouble with a particular game you can look to see if there are any launch options or specific versions of proton that you can utilize to essentially run said game almost everything these days is compatible with this on utilizing Proton and I have had very few games not function including Monster Hunter Wilds on day one which I was able to boot up and play immediately, which is quite impressive. I am looking into additional options for, of course, content creation and getting all of that configured because I do plan on moving my main content creation rig over to it. 
But for the most part, all of my gaming rigs are slowly moving over. Of course, on mine right now, I am dual booting because a big caveat is that Fortnite is not supported right now because of its anti-cheat. Hopefully that will be changing as it is adopted more. The great part about this as well is that there is no licensing fee or cost, so it's a free operating system for you to utilize on your gaming system. If you find this kind of content helpful and fun, please hit the like and comment or down below. Please hit the like and comment down below, and I will see you next Tuesday. Golly.